DC's, is, he's, you know, it's interesting. Guy. Like somebody said to me once that DC should be fighting middleweight. And I'm like, go stand next to him and say that. His he's core a tank. is like this thick. Yeah, he's a tank. He's a big dude. Yeah, he might only be 5'10". Well, but they he's say that because he's dense. a little chubby, but yeah. he's stronger than anybody can imagine. You don't pick up Dan Henderson. How about Josh this? Barnett? Remember when he, when he was fighting yeah. heavyweight in Strike Force? Yes. He picked up Josh Barnett like he was a pillow and that's, slammed him on the ground. That's what I mean. Like, the yeah. guy, like, blows my mind yeah. how good he is. Yeah. And I don't think Phenomenal people wrestler. give him enough credit. Like, yeah. I know DC on a training level when I watch him train on a personal level. I mean, he's DC. He's crazy. He's always talking out of his butt, you know, to an extent. It's hilarious. But, uh... He's a beast, man. You he's gotta respect that. Yeah, I love that guy. Me too. He's he's a, he's a great guy. guy. He's just he's in the era of John Jones, you know, and he lost and to I John in his first fight, and he's also dealing with the fact that John, although I love John too, John's a fuck up, you know, and so he's got to sort of be there while John keeps fucking up, and then a lot of it comes back to him. But that's where I look at DC and why I try to give him all the respect in the world I can because I don't feel that people. Give enough respect to DC for the fact that he's not fucking right. No, he's like, great. How guy. come you don't? Right. How does that get overlooked? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with people can connect to fuck ups. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Too. There's because, that. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, and and John Jones is that good. Yeah. That's the other thing. That's he's other thing. literally that good. He's, he's that good. Freak. He could beat you after he did coke three weeks ago. I don't I mean, know what to say about that. That's the thing about you know? John. You I'm know? good enough to win after three surgeries. You know? So let's see. <laughs> we can we can test yeah. the waters on both. Let's see who does what. I'll do a line of coke next time and then try to jump in there and see how I do. And let's blow his knees out three times and then we'll see who's better. Well, that's a different animal. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's interesting that sometimes people are just supremely talented physically and they don't have to deal with as many trials and tribulations in that regard. You know, he's very gifted. Like John, like it's it's interesting. I've always said this. Like, there's a way that John gets a hold of people that you know you could almost tell when he gets a hold of them that they've really have never felt anything like that before. And you saw it with DC. You know, DC, who's a supremely talented wrestler. I mean, one of the best wrestlers to ever compete in MMA. Period. John Jones got a hold of him, and you could see DC was like, "Oh shit! Like this guy is no joke." I agree. I mean. John's that, a stud. Yeah. He's, he's a fucking stud. He's that good. He's that good. He's that good. But and so is DC, so though. Is DC. DC could still beat him. I really believe that. I, it's it's entirely possible. There if was I had still to a very choose, close I would, fight. I would probably, if I had to choose on paper, you, you'd take Jones depending on how healthy he is. Well, DC was so furious that he didn't fight him in the Oven St. Prue fight because he was like, I would have beat that John Jones. Because yeah, I did commentary with him yeah, in that fight. He's exactly. like, I would have beat that John Jones. And, and, and here's another thing on that, okay? Because... How's that? That might not be true either. Right. Because that John Jones would have trained differently for you than of he course. trained for Dave Ovin St. Prue. Yeah. And who know? And he hates. Well, the Ovin St. Prue was a very late replacement. Don't right? forget this, though. I mean, yeah. how much does he hate DC? He's not going to let that oh, get yeah. away from oh, him. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. It's a different level of training you're doing for different people mm -hmm. and where your emotions are with that human being. That's a really good point. It is. And, but don't you think that was a big factor in the first fight as well? Because DC was very emotionally wrapped up in fighting John. It was very intense because he had never had anybody disrespect him like that they had that fist fight at the uh, press that definitely conference had to do with it sure of course that has to do with every fight it has to do with my fights it has to do with all of them you have mm -hmm. to calculate it had to do with conor perry fights oh yeah Ronda rousey's fights oh yeah anderson silva's fights when he's showboating everything mm -hmm. i mean you can go the list goes on of the mental problems that a lot of these athletes have had and usually if the mental isn't there they lose yeah, it's, yeah. it comes down to that and you also got to go back to the way daniel cormier handled rumble He's the only guy that's been able to eat rumble shots, absorb them, and come back and break him. You know, that was, uh, I mean. Yeah, he ate that right hand and just ooh. hit his head on the floor, woke back up, and then went yeah. after it. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's respectable, too, that, that I don't think fans or anybody can really understand what it takes to get slightly knocked out, stand back up, and want to keep going. Yeah. That's a different level of understanding of this sport. Like, as an athlete, when I watch a fighter go through that, and keep their composure, move around, and deal with that problem. And then even if they lose but stay in the fight and go the distance and tough it out, like Diego Sanchez is a great example of that. Yeah. It's like how do you not respect and, right. and have a, a real logical understanding that that human being is built from something different? Yeah. Um, so, look, the main event – 
Whew, man, I gotta say, man, I, I bet I put money down. Um, I, I put a bar lay down, and you told me once again you're right. You're, I really should listen to you because I don't think you're really ever wrong with your picks. You're pretty good, Mike. Yeah, I'm always wrong on TV though, because on TV I kind of skew it a little bit because I take people's personal feelings into consideration. Mm. Because I know for a fact, uh, obviously, because I fight myself. When you're in the locker room, the pre-fight show, the Fox pre-fight show, airs in the locker room, and sometimes. You know, if, if a guy's rooting against you, it can affect your psyche, it can affect your confidence, it can just bring negative energy into the room. And of course, if you know that person as well, and you know, obviously I work with Daniel Cormier a lot over at Fox, um, it's kind of a dick move as well. So, you know, I did predict Cormier to win, and you know, on TV I predicted Cormier to win. I thought in my heart of hearts, John Jones would do it, but I didn't want to put that, 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 those bad vibes out there. You know what I'm saying? I want to project positivity towards him because realistically, that first fight was pretty close. The first three rounds, DC did an amazing job. Okay, four and five, he clearly lost. But the case for me saying DC was going to win wasn't purely based on I'm trying to do a solid right. to a friend. Of course. You, know, you know what I mean? That, that wasn't me being a complete sellout and disrespecting Jones or DC. I, I, I could see DC winning the fight. And because it was so close in my mind, I thought I at least owe him that respect to put that out there. So that's why I did pick DC. But, you know, if someone put a gun to my head and said, who wins, DC or Jones? I'd have said Jones. I yeah. would have said Jones. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I mean, look, I was kind of torn on it. And part of me was picking, um, I kind of, I don't want to say pick with my heart, but I, I'm kind of picking for who I'm rooting for. There's always a part of me that kind of is looking for the angle for the guy that I want to win. So you start to convince yourself like, oh, this is how he can do it. And the layoff was a big deal. You know, you know, 15 month layoff. Last time we saw him after a 13 month layoff, we saw, you know, a little bit of tentativeness out of John Jones against OSP. Um, so that's kind of why I said, you know what? I think Cormier has looked better than ever. I think he can do it. And not for nothing, Cormier looked better than ever in this fight. In my opinion, that was the best Daniel Cormier we've ever seen. But John Jones was not tentative. John Jones came out right out the gate and brought it right to him it was so incredible to watch john jones come out and look like he was getting dirty throw caution of the well, wind really get fucking aggressive john jones was not as aggressive in the opening rounds if i'm not mistaken in his past fights and that was like like it was super impressive i was very impressed with john well, jones well, 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 well i don't know and a lot of people have said this to me on twitter and if i'm wrong please point it out but i kind of feel differently i kind of feel like um it wasn't a very good John Jones that we were seeing. Yeah, Daniel Cormier looked well. I thought Daniel won the first round. I thought he won the second round. And I think he was on track to win the third round as well. Yes, Jones was, um, he was, he was focusing on the legs a lot. He was focusing on the oblique kicks to the thighs, the front kick to the thighs, the stomping kicks, a lot of leg kicks and a lot of elbows as, uh, as uh, jo uh, sorry, Daniel tried to close the distance. And I found it very frustrating to watch. Um... In the first fight, at the end of round three, Greg Jackson told John Jones, play Tom and Jerry, get on your bike, stop DC from closing the distance, because DC has to close the distance to fight to fight John Jones. John Jones' reach is 84 inches long, the longest in the UFC. It's a 12-inch reach advantage. Uh, so DC has to close the distance, so the plan was for him to stay on the bike, stay on the outside.